So our, our last talk is a TBCG paper. It's called Shifty, uh, Weight Shifting, Dynamic Passive Haptic Proxy to Enhance Object Perception in Virtual Reality. And Andre Tsena and Antonio Kruger are the authors. And Andre is going to make a presentation. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Andre, and I'm a PhD student and researcher at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. And today I'm going to talk about our paper Shifty, which I've done together with my advisor, Antonio Krüger. So I'm going to talk today about how we can enhance the perception of interacting with virtual objects in a virtual environment. And when we look at how we interact today with virtual environments, well, we know that there's a common paradigm of using such handheld VR controllers that provide us with some passive haptic feedback and some active vibrotactile feedback. However, in terms of their kinesthetic feedback, they only deliver a fixed kinesthetic impression. And so in terms of weight, they always feel very, very lightweight. And this can lead to interesting problems. For example, when we want to pick up and interact with large and heavy virtual objects, as they start to feel unrealistically lightweight or balloon-like, and the user can control them in a way which is unrealistic. And the user might think that he's equipped with some sort of superpowers, which is, of course, not always an intended feature. And so this leads us to a more general problem of using passive haptic feedback in virtual reality, which is a certain lack of generality, as a single physical prop can only map to a limited set of virtual objects realistically. And so I want to introduce now our concept that tries to increase the generality of passive haptics. And we call this concept dynamic passive haptic feedback, as it is a combination of conventional passive haptics of the visual dominance effect and often dynamic adaptation. And we'll now look at the actual definition of this concept, and then we'll see an actual implementation of the concept in form of a prototype that we built. So the idea of dynamic passive haptics is pretty simple. We propose to equip passive props with actuators in order to build dynamic props that use these actuators now to transform their passive haptic feedback of the object dynamically during runtime, and to do that without the user noticing it, so without exerting noticeable active forces on the user. And the advantage of this is, of course, an increase in generality as one such physical dynamic prop can then map to a larger set of virtual objects by adapting to the virtual object to represent, and using appropriate visualizations we can also trigger different haptic illusions with a single dynamic prop, as we will see later in this talk. Of course, compared to conventional passive haptics, by introducing some actuator technology, we also increase the complexity somehow. But as we'll also see sometimes, very simple actuations, simple changes in the object can already suffice to enhance the perception of the user in a significant way. And the concept covers all different types of proxy properties. So we can imagine shape changing, texture, or temperature changing objects that all fall under this definition. And in our paper and in this talk today, we focus specifically on one type of property, which is the weight distribution of an object. Now we can use the weight distribution in a prop to enhance the perception of interacting with different objects. And when we want to classify our approach in the theoretical context, we know that there are basically two extreme approaches to haptics in VR, which is on the one side here, on the left side, conventional passive haptics, like here the example of INSCO, where some low fidelity props are registered in this case to uh, architectural features and provide passive haptic feedback for a virtual kitchen in this case. And on the other side, we have active haptic approaches where users interact with active haptic devices, like the Phantom here on the right side, that then actively render forces on the user as he touches them. And we can see this as two opposite poles of an active passive haptics continuum, which spans a space of different mixed haptic approaches in between, which combine active and passive haptics aspects. For example, the approach of robotic graphics or encounter type haptics that we've just seen in two talks before, which also combines robotic arms holding props in the environment that are then touched by the user. And in a similar way, we can also define um, dynamic passive haptics to be a sort of mixed haptic approach, which is very close to the passive haptics end, though, because such a dynamic prop is typically, at most of the time, just a conventional passive prop. 
But at some points in time, it might transform its properties, and during this transformation, and depending on the transformation, it might exert some noticeable forces on the user, and then during this time, it might be located somewhere between active and passive haptics. Well, and I now want to introduce to you an actual implementation of our concept in form of our weight shifting proxy object that we call Shifty for short. And to understand the haptic feedback that Shifty provides, we have to take a look at the perceptional research that was conducted by Chan and Turbay, which looked at how we as humans perceive rod-shaped objects that we hold in our hand and that we interact with when we cannot see them. And they found that the perceived length and weight of such objects is actually a function of the object's moment of inertia. And this is very interesting for VR because we can change the moment of inertia of an object not only by changing length and weight, but also, for example, by changing just the internal weight distribution. And so, in uh, preliminary work, we looked at how we can use these results to enhance the perception of rod-shaped proxy objects uh, in VR interaction. And what we saw was that we can actually use a single physical prop and when we can reconfigure the weight distribution internally, we can use this one single prop to enhance the perception of different virtual objects that we interact with that differ in the virtual weight distribution, in the virtual absolute weight, or in the virtual shape. And in this paper, we took these results and brought them to the domain of dynamic passive haptics. And so we built a prototype prop that we can see here in this video. It's a simple tubular object that was equipped with a simple actuating motor, a stepper motor. It has an internal belt mechanism and a 3D printed weight filled with lead. And it is wirelessly connected to the VR system, which can then control the position of the internal weight. And by shifting the weight away from the user's hand, it can translate the center of mass location, and then with the effect of gravity, and it can also increase or decrease the moment of inertia of the object when you interact with it. Then you feel different um, like rotational resistances when you wield the object. And well, as you can see, the object is ungrounded and um, it's, it's wirelessly connected to the VR system. And it had, well, in our prototype, we had a small backpack which was carrying the uh, electronics and the power source. And the user then just had to grasp the uh, end effector object here, the proxy, which weighed like 440 grams, and 30% of the mass were movable over a range of 36 centimeters. And by this we could change the center of mass location in a range of 11 centimeters. And now to fulfill the definition of dynamic passive haptics and to prevent active forces from being exerted on the user, we used a slow weight shift here to just change the passive kinesthetic feedback of the proxy. And so it took around 2.8 seconds here for a full shift to complete. And we evaluated our object in uh, user experiments where our users interacted with it by grasping it at the grip end, as we can see here in this video. And then during some conditions, the object adapted the internal weight distribution and in synchronization we then changed the visual appearance of the object interacted with in different ways. And so we conducted two experiments, which were both within subject experiments. Both were conducted with 12 participants, and in the first one, we used these synchronized weight shifts in the proxy to enhance the perception of interacting with different virtual objects that change their virtual shape. So the change in length and in thickness in the virtual world. And as both the change in the virtual world and the haptic transformation were continuously progressing, we could simply synchronize both to map haptic space and virtual space. And so, in this experiment, we then had two conditions that we compared in a counterbalanced uh, ordering. So, um, the first one being the fixed weight distribution condition, where Shifty was used holding the weight stationary at the grip end and so mimicking a conventional passive haptic prop. And then the second condition, we used Shifty's internal weight shifts to enhance the perception in the adapted weight distribution condition. And then the user's task here in this first experiment was to simply interact with a telescopic object that could be extended, and he had to fully extend it, fully retract it again, and then we took some subjective measures after the interaction, assessing the perceived realism, the exertion, and the fun the users had. And then in the second run, users interacted with this similar object, which changed its thickness, 
So they had to fully pump it up and enlarge it and fully shrink it again before we again took some subjective measures. And the results of this first experiment were very positive. So we could show that we can, using this adaptive weight distribution, enhance the perceived realism and the uh, perceived fun of the user during the interaction in a significant way. Moreover, we got very positive feedback about uh, the weight shifting feedback in the probe. So users really like the kinesthetic adaptation of the object to what's happening in the virtual world. And they also reported a very strong feeling of interacting with an object that actually changed in length and thickness. So they really thought the object is changing in length and thickness, depending on the visualization. And this is very interesting as it shows, uh, again, how important the visual dominance effect is when we interact with dynamic props for this, in, in this example. And then in the second experiment, we used the same synchronized weight shifts in the prop, but this time to enhance the perception of picking up different virtual objects of different virtual weights. So basically the problem that I introduced at the beginning. And now we were facing a very instantaneous event in the virtual world, as picking up is typically a very discrete task as the user just goes close to the virtual object with the controller, he presses the trigger button, the object snaps to the controller, and well, he then picked it up basically. And so we had a mismatch between our continuous weight shift, which took around 2.8 seconds, and our instantaneous change in the virtual world. And so to compensate for this dynamic mismatch, we used compensating audiovisual animations of the pickup process to see the effect of them. And in the second experiment, we had the same two conditions here again. And we added four further conditions on top of the adaptive weight distribution feedback, which were different visualizations of the pickup process, all accompanied by the same auditory feedback, which was a whoosh-like sound that was played in synchronization with the weight shift. And the task in this experiment was to pick up a lightweight, a medium-heavy, and a heavy virtual object from a virtual inventory, and to perform a simple docking task, then, as we can see here in this video, before we again assess the user's impression of the object, of the uh, interaction, the perceived realism, and so on. And I now want to show you the four different visualizations that we used. So the first one was the progress bar visualization. Here, simply a virtual progress bar displayed the progress of the haptic change. In the second animation, the scaling animation, the virtual object was scaled from icon size to actual size in the virtual space. And by this, somehow displaying the progress of the weight shift and also, um, well, displaying progress of the weight shift and also somehow explaining the haptic feedback of the object being becoming heavier. The transparency uh, animation showed the object to become more and more opaque or solid, also showing the progress of the weight shift and somehow on an abstract level explaining why the object is feeling more and more heavy. And the last animation we used was masking animation. Here we masked the virtual object in a thick smoke field which only disappeared completely when the weight shift was over. So here we had no visual indication of the progress of the weight shift, but still we had an indication that something is changing in the haptic space. And our participants experienced all these conditions in a counterbalanced order, and after each condition we then asked them to directly compare the last two experienced conditions in terms of their perceived realism of the compensation effect, so if it had a negative influence on immersion or not, on the perceived exertion, the fun and their personal preference. And from all these direct comparisons that we then had, we could compute a final ranking table, so to say, which compared the different conditions for all the different measures. And you can look up more details on how we did the evaluation in the paper, but just to shortly summarize the most important findings by presenting a summary table here which sums up the scores of all measures, we found the scaling animation to perform best here in this scenario. It was rated as the most realistic to interact with, it was perceived as being the best in terms of compensation, and it was also preferred by our users. The masking animation was also performing very good. It was uh, perceived as the most fun to interact with, and they really liked it as well, so it was also uh, preferred by our users. Transparency animation, and especially the progress bar, were trailing behind a little bit, especially the progress bar was perceived as not being very immersive, and the transparency animation was perceived as a little bit too subtle, maybe. And as we would expect on the last two ranks, we find our reference conditions without any compensation for the mismatch. And on the last rank, we find our reference condition uh, with the fixed weight distribution, so conventional passive haptics. So, 
to wrap this up, um, what we've seen here was a comparison of passive haptic feedback as we know it and our approach of dynamic passive haptics where we use props that have actuators to change their passive haptic feedback properties in order to make a single dynamic prop that can map to a larger set of different virtual objects. And in our experiment with our dynamic prototype prop that changes the weight distribution, we could show that we can enhance the perceived realism and the perceived uh, fun during the interaction compared to equivalent passive haptic props. And concerning exertion, of course, if we have an object that does a kinesthetic adaptation and can increase or decrease the moment of inertia, we also increase and decrease the physical demand necessary when we interact with the object. And so this also contributes, of course, to the um, perceived realism when we interact with large and heavy virtual objects then. And concerning preference, our users strongly prefer dynamic passive haptics over conventional passive haptics. And uh, they really commented very positively about the haptic feedback when we have a kinesthetic change in the prop or controller. And they really like this adaptation to what's happening in the virtual world. And so from a conceptual point of view to wrap this up, what we've used was a single, very simple haptic effect of slow dynamic weight shifts in the prop or controller. And we combined this with three different visualizations of what's changing in the virtual world. So a change in length, thickness, or volume of the object interacted with. And this triggered then three different haptic illusions, so to say, the illusion of a length, a thickness, or a weight change. And we believe that by adding even more different visualizations, like changes in the material or filling of an object, we can, using the same haptic effect, uh, trigger even more haptic illusions. And so this again, showed the influence of the uh, visual dominance effect and the importance of visualizations when we interact with such dynamic objects. And it also shows that very simple um, transformations of the passive haptic feedback can suffice to bring a rich set of different haptic illusions to the experience and to enhance the user's experience. And so the concept of dynamic passive haptics now offers many starting points for future work, many of them described in our paper. And one would be to integrate weight shifting feedback, for example, also in the Viper tactile controllers that we already know, to enhance the interaction with them. Moreover, we want to look also into a combination of dynamic passive props and redirected touching strategies in order to further increase the generality of a single dynamic prop, for example. And it would certainly be very interesting to see other dynamic props being developed that now really change other passive haptic feedback properties or that combine changes in many different properties into a single object. And this concludes my talk, so thank you very much.